pipes around the house. In this video we're looking at part 2 of a series of my loft conversion videos and in today's video we're going to be cutting the joists, getting all the joists up into the loft, we're going to be fitting the joists, making some packer plates to raise the joists slightly off the wall plates and we're going to be making some noggins to brace the whole thing together. So moving on from the last video I did on the loft conversion, the loft is now clear of insulation, I've cleared out all the black mortar and I've got good access to the eaves. So what I need to do is measure the wall plate, get the shape, I'm going to cut a rough template out with a piece of cardboard then once I've got that, I'm going to apply this to some plywood and we can use this to cut the joists out in the garden and then we can come back up and put the joists into place. And there's no easy way to do this. I've got to get down in the eaves, get the measuring tape out and apply some sort of drawing to the cardboard which I can then cut out and go back in with trial and error and alter it until I get the right shape. So just to show you the setup I've got, it's a little bit odd but if you imagine this is your brick interior cavity wall and we've got our wooden wall plate on the top. It's actually got another wall plate on top of this wall plate at a slight angle like this and the rafters are sitting along that there. Now these rafters are secured down into this wall plate and this wall plate has been nailed to the other wall plate on top of the bricks. So what I need to do is get my joists and cut the end to shape. So if you imagine these joists are going to be sitting up between the rafters hence you can see this bit of joist by there. So what I need to do is have this bit of the joist sitting on the wall plate and then I'm going to cut the angle of this to sit flush with this wall plate here but then I want to create this little bit of overhang here so it'll go up with the shape of the roof there and back and the reason I want to do this is that although I'm securing this joist down to the wall plates there I'd like to put some nails down through this piece of the joist into this wall plate just to make sure that everything is secured together so I'll have this joist attached to that wall plate I'll have it attached to this wall plate through there and I'll attach the joist through to the rafters by here this way everything is secured together and nothing will be able to move. So this is the template that I've made after taking my measurements and it's what you've got is this piece here it will be the base of the joist and this will be sat on the wall plate then this shape here is what butts against your second wall plate I showed you a minute ago and then this bit will overhang the second wall plate that the rafters are attached to. I'm just working my way along every rafter where I'm going to position the joist and just make sure that the template I've made fits into place. So I've just quickly come down in the shed, I've got my cardboard template, apologies for the chicken, I'm going to apply the markings of this to some plywood, I'm going to cut that out and then I'm going to use the plywood template as my final guide to mark out all the joists. <laughs> plywood guide which we can use to mark out the end of the joist and get the same cut on each joist every time. So here's my pile of joists, they're C24 graded timber and they're 175mm by 75mm. Now usually you go with a slightly narrower joist which is slightly taller but in my situation I'm limited with headroom so to give me a little bit of extra height I've gone for a shorter joist that is slightly wider which maintains the strength of the joist. Now quite simply to use the template I just place it like this onto the joist, butting that end up flush with the end and then I just draw down there, down there and down there. So this bit here will sit on the wall plate and give us our strength. Then this cut I've done here is the bit that will go over that second wall plate that in my house has the rafters coming down and sitting on them and then this here is cut in line with the slope of the roof. That way this won't stick up into the felt, which we don't want. So as you can see I've managed to get Popper Pouse doing a little bit of work outside on his own. Looks like he's having a little think about it. Most work I've got out of him in a long time. So shall I use the saw? Oh, let's move a bench. He's going to struggle with that one. He's getting on a bit now. Anyway, I better go down there and give him a hand. Kicked out, I'm left out in the cold again. Again, checking his phone. Can't get the staff these days. So I'm using a table saw so I can cut out some packers, and I'm using these to go underneath the joists and above the wall plate. So basically, when my joists are slightly uneven, we can use these to lift them up or down and get all the joists level with each other. 
I'm making these out of plywood. I'm going to cut a few out of different thicknesses of plywood and that way we can mess around so that we can get the levels right. And it's what this also does, because I've got an old house with lath and plaster, it allows me to lift the joists up slightly so that it'll sit above the lath because in certain places it's bowed up, you've got a little bit of mortar sticking out and it could get a little bit fiddly. And the last thing I want is those joists pushing down on the ceiling below and breaking all my plasterboard and causing cracks in the ceiling of the bedrooms. Safety first. And it tells a story And how it's gonna end Tell a story And that's all my pack is cut And here he is, look, Papa Pouch still having a go This cut on this joist is actually slightly different to the cut that I was showing you previously. I made a template out of plywood, but I had this slightly different shape on it before. Basically we changed our plans as we went along. We were going to leave an overhang which was going to go over the wall plate and we'd nail through. We decided against that because it was a lot quicker to do a cut like this, butt it up to the wall plate. Then it's what we're going to do when we're re-roofing it, we're going to put a metal L-shaped bracket on the back so we can screw into the back of the joist and then we're just going to screw straight down into the wall plate. But you'll be able to see us do that in a later video. So just to explain that in a bit more detail, I've gone back to the diagram I showed you earlier. And where previously we were cutting the joist in this sort of shape here, over there, creating this little overhang like that. Instead, is what we've done now is just done a cut straight up there and a cut along there. That way it's two nice simple cuts which butt up against this second wall plate and then when I take the felt and the slates off I'll decide at the time but it's what I currently propose to do is then put an L shaped bracket down there, down there and that way we could screw through there into this second wall plate and screw through there into the back of this joist securing the two together and obviously we'll be securing this joist down to that wall plate as I said previously with screws and nails straight down that way. You can see here, I got it under a tarpaulin because it started raining. Now hopefully if the weather picks up tomorrow, we can start to get these up into the loft. So it's the next day, the weather has been kind to us. When Big Pouch turns up, we're going to get these joists up in the loft. that we can't get in at the moment right down in the eaves but we'll do those when we put the new dormer on the roof and it'll be a lot easier then but for now we've got the majority of the floor in um, they're only loose at the moment we'll come back after lunch we'll secure the little um, packer plates down we'll secure the joist down hopefully everything will be nice and rigid and then we get some floorboards loosely on the top and we can have a nice working area up here then so now we can walk along this floor without putting any pressure on the ceiling below as all the joists are supported on the exterior walls of the house and the central low bearing wall so it's pretty solid even though it hasn't even been secured down yet. across the middle there we put some noggins and if you look out there we got some noggins there and if we just move around to this side you can see we haven't done it here but I'm about to do those now 
so just to give you a closer look at the packer plates underneath these joists, if you look there's my 18mm plywood that I cut out earlier, and they just sit on top of the wall plates there, this is the central wall plate over the low bearing wall, packer plate, joists on top, and then all that weight is transferred down to the low bearing wall. And so all that's done is slightly raise the joist off, you can see there, so there's a little gap underneath. And this is just making sure that where we've got any bows or knots in the old lath, that it's not going to hit the lath and push the ceiling down. And actually something else is done which is a bonus, is it's allowed me gaps underneath these joists here, so I can actually run all my cables underneath without having to drill through the joists. One more thing I wanted to mention quickly is that earlier in the video I said I might need different size packers to put underneath the floor joists just to level them out. Well as it turns out the wall plates are all bang on level give or take a few millimetres. And by using only the 18mm packers underneath the joists, all the joists have turned out level. So that was a real result. Something else I wanted to share with you was just a little money saving tip and a way to save wood. Now the centre of these joists are 400mm, so the gap in between is about 330mm. So, is what I thought was I'd try to use these noggins from offcuts of my wood. So my joists are 4.8 metres long. Now I didn't need this length because the span's not that big on either side, but I wanted to overlap them in the middle. So is what I did was left all the joists on one side of the loft at the full length of 4.8 metres, and that gives you this really long overlap you can see there over this low bearing wall. And then the ones on the other side that you can see that stop here only overlap by about 30 centimetres. Now that gives me a good overlap between the two joists to secure them all together with screws, making it nice and solid. But by doing a bit of planning and preparation, I worked out that by cutting off one metre off all the joists on the other side of the loft would leave me with three noggins per offcut. And then these noggins I can use right up the centre and the two sides of the loft. Now these joists are not particularly cheap, so it's well worth trying to save wood where you can. The other thing you'll notice with these noggins is that we've had to put them on their side rather than up vertical. And the reason for that is we've obviously got the old joists by there and by there running underneath. So you can't put them vertical because they would hit these. So that's pointless. So by turning them on their side and just dropping them down to the centre of these joists, you get the stability, but you're leaving the gap for the joists to go underneath as well. What we've simply done with the noggins, just the measuring tape between each joist, they're roughly the same. They vary ever so slightly as you go along. And then cut these out, we've numbered them, so when I come in now, I know that number one is at the back of the loft, I know that number seven is at the front of the loft, and that way I can just slot them into place and screw them, and they should all fit bang on. It makes the job nice and quick. You come and give all answers, you know the other questions, this feels like an ambush to me. You come and give all answers, you know the other questions. screws through into the packer plates which are underneath the joist and we put those down into the wall plates we put screws through from the joist down into the wall plates so we now secured everything together with noggins along the middle and underneath the purlins so that's really braced everything together nicely this is a quick look at what we've done today going around the room you can see all the joists we've laid a few loose floorboards on top you can see all the noggins over there and how all the joists run right back down to the wall plate on both sides that's another day come to an end, pretty happy with that. All my joists are up for now, there's a few more I've got to put in but I can only do those once I put the uh, dormer on the end of the house. So yeah, pretty much that's it for today, so I'll see you in the next video. For more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell. <laughs>